time. Hell yes, we're gonna take your AR-15, your AK-47. Are you sure about that? It's a good place. Here we are in the middle of it, right up on the mountain. If this son of a bitch wants that bitch about his cows over here and shoot at me, well, it's our country. All right, everybody. Welcome to part two of signaling. Signaling at night. Since half of all our time in this world is at night, it is probably best if we learn how to signal and fight at night. Daytime! Daytime! Nighttime! Daytime! And with current technology and the use of night vision and thermals being incredibly accessible, any operation that could be done at night arguably should be done at night. Especially if we're talking about possibly finding an enemy that does not have that capability. Now this video is going to cover signaling under night vision, thermal, and the naked eye with any type of optics to enhance your vision. Now that's going to be the last portion because it requires a little bit more of a discussion and a little less of a demonstration of options. This video is not going to discuss radios. We already discussed that in the first video, but radios will always be the best way. There's no better way for me to tell you what to do than doing that. All right, up first is the laser. Now, predominantly I'm gonna be referring to this as an IR laser, but it would work the same using a daytime laser. Now, when we're using lasers to signal, um, it can be done in a myriad of different ways. Number one, you could circle whatever you're trying to signal. Like, hey, look over here, there's something over there. Uh, there's some other ways you could do this too. Now when we're talking about subsequent commands, i.e. going from shift fire to lift fire, it can be kind of difficult to differentiate the two with a laser. Um, whether you need to differentiate at all is another story, but let's just say you do. It's perfectly possible you could use your IR laser, circle it uh, to signal shift fire. Then you could use the vis laser, circle it to shift lift fire. Now, the issue with that is if you have night vision on, um, Unless you have your naked eye exposed, you're not going to notice the difference between the two. Another option, and the one I have pictured here, if you have a PEC-15, is a lens cap filter. Uh, these ones, they just change the shape of the beam you're throwing. So it could be a triangle, a circle, whatever it is. Now the issue with this is, obviously you're not going to be changing these out in between shift and lift fire. So you would need a team to have a clear plan on who is going to throw this at what point. For instance, maybe a point man has just a regular laser, he throws that out, circles it for shift fire, and then the team leader or squad leader has a triangle, and he throws that out and circles it for lift fire. That's just one example. And the other point is, do you even need a subsequent command? It's really simple to just say, the first time I circle this IR laser, that is shift fire. The second time I do it, that is lift fire. The only problem with this is you are requiring people to understand this and not do those signals in between the two commands. Another option we have is using some type of illuminator, whether it be a weapon mounted or uh, an illuminator on something like a PVS-14. You can flick that on and that's a clear bright signal to do whatever you need done. Another and probably the most common option that you'll see people bring up is a buzzsaw. Here I just have a simple IR chem light tied to a piece of 550 cord and you just swing it around. Great way to signal. Uh, you don't need the whole thing exposed, you can expose half of it. Here's a super simple setup I have. It is a IR chem light and a regular chem light tied to a piece of 550 cord. Whichever one you need, you crack it and you spin it around. Ideally you won't want the whole chem light exposed on um, whether you leave it in the wrapper or you tape it up but you don't really need the entire chem light exposed. It's going to expose you more and it's not really necessary. 
So the talk all over YouTube lately has been uh, NIR compliant clothes. So clothes that aren't going to give you away uh, under night vision. Uh, this was the big issue with uh, black multicam. It glows in the dark. Now, what is material like this good for? Well, it's good for signaling. So these materials that are not NIR compliant, that are glowing in the dark, i.e. a VS-17 panel, can still be used under night vision for a buzzsaw. Here you see me using a VS-17 panel, and it still works at night under night vision because it's essentially glowing in the dark. You could still use this as a buzzsaw. So this is another great option we have. You can still use your VS-17 panel. Now, if this thing gets covered in dirt, etc., it's not going to work as good. But you could really use any type of NIR non-compliant. Now, the next item we're going to talk about is beacons. Now, there's a whole bunch of different variety of beacons. I'm not going to talk about them all here, but just the practicality and use of them. Now, beacons are more for recognition than they are signaling, but nonetheless, recognition is essentially a type of signaling, especially when we're talking about overhead, air assets, etc. These are great things to have. Uh, most commonly, these are used um, worn on helmets or uh, gear of some sort, but they don't have to be. Uh, here you see just a simple 9-volt battery with a $9 um, beacon on top that I'm using to signal my position. This is what it looks like from about 20 meters away. It works great. This is a great option to add to your pace plan. Another option we have, it's not the best option, but uh, smoke. Smoke can be seen under night vision. It has very good contrast. It can still be used. Um, smoke also works very well under thermal. Thermal, it almost works better under thermal than it does under night vision, uh, especially at the base of the smoke. Now, thermal is a little bit difficult for signaling. Not a lot of stuff shows up. Now, smoke can be used to screen or obscure you, but white phosphorus can. A lot of people don't understand this. White phosphorus um, is incredibly hot, and under thermal, it will obscure anything behind it, giving off a heat signature just due to the heat it has. Now, how we're going to get our hands on that, I don't know, but it's just some knowledge to put out there. Another thing I've been experimenting with when it comes to signaling with thermals is uh, making a buzzsaw visible under thermals. And an easy way to do this is using a hand warmer, tying 550 cord around it, and spinning it. I haven't tested it long enough to be able to speak to its durability and how long the hand warmers will last, but just in the very idea of it, it does work. In general, signaling under thermals is kind of difficult. The only way you can effectively do this is finding something that has a change in heat that is visible. Um, buzz saws, stuff like this, they're not really going to work. I've attempted it. There's no really good way to do it except uh, what I've already explained. But you need some way of having something that has a heat difference that can be visibly seen. This could even be something that's very cold. Now, how you're going to keep that cold, I don't really know, but that's also an option. All right, now let's talk about unassisted signaling. So signaling if you don't have night vision and thermals. Um, this can be a little difficult, and uh, it is incredibly dangerous because if you find somebody who does have night vision, you're going to stick out like crazy. Here we have just a buzzsaw with a uh, dimmed out old chem light. Um, if you're using a brand new chem light, congratulations, they're going to see you from China. Now all of China knows you're here. One good thing you can do is, uh, whatever you're doing, minimize the amount of light as much as possible. Uh, what I'm demonstrating here is a chem light in a wrapper, and I'm the only thing that's exposed is the top of the chem light, and when I'm not using it to signal, it's covered up with my thumb. So you could do two flashes to signal, uh, one flash to signal, whatever. Um, here I'm moving back. Uh, the furthest I'll get back is probably like 20 meters. Here's a buzzsaw. Um... Next, you'll be seen doing the same thing with a uh, red lens. I'll move back to probably 30 meters at the most. You can see what that kind of looks like. 
Um, as you can see, the red lens is incredibly brighter than the chem light, obviously, but this is just to give you an example of why you would probably choose a chem light over a uh, red lens. At the end here, I will show you a demonstration of a white light. Um, you would not want to use a white light at all unless it was an absolute emergency. And that's what I'm demonstrating here, essentially using a white light as a uh, type of a buzzsaw. Alright guys, same as the first video, hand and arm signals and voice communication will always be king. Mainly voice communications at night. Hand and arm can, signals can get a little difficult at night, um, obviously. But uh, voice will always be king. There's no misconstruing me telling you exactly what I want you to do. We don't have to worry about a signal. Alright, that completes the videos on signaling for the Minuteman series. Thank you guys.